Hello, I'd like to demonstrate circular motion and the nature of the centripetal force. Here I have a diagram of an object moving in a circular path in this fashion. And uh, we note that the force on that object is toward the center of the circle. It's the basic nature of circular motion that the net force on the object is toward the center. This is called a centripetal force. Let me demonstrate that. Here I have a triangle. Not exactly a circle, but uh, just to build up to this, let's suggest that if I have a ball bounce off the walls of the triangle, in a way similar to the way the ball would bounce off the table here. As the ball bounces off the table, the table pushes up on the ball and deflects the ball and makes the ball change direction from moving downward to moving upward. Similarly, if this ball bounces off the walls of the triangle, the triangle will push toward the center at each collision, making the ball deflect inward. Let me see if I can demonstrate that by getting the ball moving around inside this triangle. So you can see as the ball moves around in the triangle, the walls of the triangle push inward on the ball. Next, let's try a square, increasing the number of sides of the geometrical figure. I'm going to let the ball bounce inside that square in a way similar to the way it did in the triangle. So again, with the square, the ball bounces around inside the square and the walls of the square push inward on the ball at each collision. Increasing the number of sides, I move to a hexagon. This might be a little more difficult to do. You can see as the ball bounces around inside the hexagon, each time it makes contact with the surface, the surface pushes inward on the ball, always pushing inward on the ball as if toward the center of the circle. I would like to straighten it out even further and go to a complete circle. We've eliminated all the corners, and you guessed it, when we get the ball bouncing or rolling around in this ring, Again, the force of the ring on the ball will be toward the center. Of course, the reaction to that will be the ball pushing outward on the ring. What I'd, like to, what I'd like to do next is to uh, show you what happens when we have a little heavier ball rolling around inside the ring. So for that, I'll go from the ping pong ball to, the, to a steel ball. Here, same idea. The walls of the ring will push inward on the ball as the ball pushes outward on the ring. But the force on the ball itself is inward, centripetal. The walls push in toward the center of the circle. Maybe you could see as I released it, maybe you could see as I released it that the ball pushes out on the ring as the ring pushes in on the ball. Try that one more time. And one other experiment we can do to show that a force inward is required to keep the ball moving in a circular path is to, at some point, 
as the ball is rolling around there, I'll just pick up the ring and watch what happens to the ball. The ball will be moving in this path. When the ball is right here, I'll lift up the ring and you'll notice that the ball will continue on with a straight line motion in the absence of a net force. Demonstrating that a centripetal force or an inward force is required to keep an object moving in a circular path. Uh, next what I'd like to do is show you what happens with a ball rolling inside a bowl. As the ball rolls around in this bowl, which I'll demonstrate in just a few seconds, the ball pushes in on the ball, keeping the ball moving in a curved path. Again, illustrating the centripetal force, a force toward the center of the circle. Another example of centripetal force. Still another example would be this uh, tether ball. Now if I take this tether ball and swing it in a circular path, similar to the diagram on the chalkboard, I'll swing this tether ball in a circular path like this. We'll neglect the effects of gravity that cause it to whip just a little bit, but neglecting that, let's assume that the ball moves for simplicity with uh, constant speed and uh, uniform circular motion. Here, the force acting on the ball to make it move toward the center of the circle is the tension in the string. So the tension in the string, due to my hand, pulls in on the ball, making the ball deviate from a straight line motion. We can show that also in, a, in this plane. Same idea. Centripetal force keeps the ball moving in a curved path. Or I can swing it over my head in a horizontal circle, maybe. Illustrating again, centripetal force toward the center keeps that ball moving in that circular path. Now, if I have the ball spinning in a vertical circle like this, and I release the ball at this position, while the ball is instantaneously moving upward, the ball will continue to move upward as we release the force. It will allow the ball to continue with a straight line motion in an upward direction, the direction it's moving at the instant that we release the centripetal force. So the ball goes straight up, comes straight down, just as if I were to throw it up in the air directly. Again, with the object moving in a circular path, a force is required toward the center of the circle to keep that object moving in a curved path. That force is applied by my hand and the string, pulling in on the ball. I can feel the reaction to that force, the ball and the string pulling out on my hand. It's an outward force, but the force on the ball is inward toward the center of the circle, illustrating that a centripetal force is required to keep an object moving in a circular path. Another uh, demonstration we can do is, is with this uh, bucket of water. Here I have a, a bucket with uh, some water in it. I'll show you the water in the bucket. What I'm going to do with this bucket is I'm going to take it, swing it up over my head. And again, it's going to take a centripetal force to keep that bucket moving in a circular path. The thing that will supply that centripetal force will be partly gravity as the bucket is up here tending to fall. And also the bottom of the bucket, which will now be on the top, will be pushing that water toward the center of the circle. So the water will have two forces on it, gravity as well as the bottom of the bucket pushing it down. Let's try that experiment and see how it works. Make sure that my arm is going to make it all the way around here. And I'll try to go with pretty much a constant speed. And uh, we'll see if we can uh, swing that bucket overhead without losing very much water. Well, not very much water. One more time. 
centripetal force.